Hi, today I'm going to show you an ultra detailed video on how we line our slab molds. All right, friends, so I am in the middle of recording the sea salt and kelp video, which you can check out after this. But in order to make that soap, we need to line our slab mold. So I thought it would be fun to do a video on lining your slab mold. Now, this is just one way to line your slab mold, and it's the way that we do it. Doesn't mean it's the best way to do it. Um, I know a lot of people do it differently. And in this particular method, your corners will be exposed. So if that's an issue for you, then this might not be the right way for you, but we'll show you exactly how we do it. And yeah, let's just dive right in. So these are the tools that we're gonna need in order to line our slab mold. This is everything that we use, I think, unless I forgot something. We've got a cutting mat, and this is just for cutting our freezer paper. We're gonna be lining our mold with freezer paper today. So we've got freezer paper. I have it on this big roll. You can also get it in sheets, which we'll talk about in just a minute. I have tape for taping down the sides of the um, liner. I have a Sharpie for marking off the edges of the loaves when I'm done lining the mold. And that's just important for when you actually make your soap. I have this little tool, which I don't know what it's called, but it basically has a flat edge on it. And this will be just for making really nice corners. So if you have something that's just small and has a flat edge, but that won't tear, you know, at the paper, then, and I'll see if I can figure out where we got these and link them. I also have this other kind of tape. You can use either regular tape or this sort of painter's tape to tape down your liner. I keep calling it a liner, but it's basically your freezer paper. I have two different kinds of rulers. I have this triangle shaped ruler here that has these different edges where you can get into the corners of the mold. And you'll see how I use that in just a minute. And then I have this super long ruler. This one is for measuring out our freezer paper. Okay, and then of course we need our mold, which is right here. So everybody's gonna have a different size mold. Our mold is 18 by 14. Just gonna move some stuff over so I can set this down. This mold is 18 long and 14 wide. So 14 inches is enough to cut this particular slab into four loaves of soap that are three and a half inches each. And then our length is 18. And we made these molds ourselves, Troy made them, and they mimic a nurture soap mold. So this is our nurture soap mold. We were making soap in these for ages and ages, and they have a liner, which is really nice. But since we made these slabs ourselves, we don't have a liner. And so what we did is we measured the inside of this and multiplied it by four. And because freezer paper is so thin, you don't actually need to take into account, you know, the thickness of this paper. So what we're gonna do today is actually really simple. We're gonna have one, these are already cut, but I'll show you exactly how I cut these. We're gonna have one piece on each end, like this. And then we're gonna have a piece in the center. Just so you can visually see what we're going to do. We're gonna have a piece that goes like this. So at the end of the day, our entire mold will be covered in freezer paper, except for these very edges here. And this seems to concern a lot of people when they're lining their molds, but we've found that it actually works really great. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you how to measure your own mold and how to use freezer paper to cut everything properly so that it fits in there perfectly. Now, you can get your freezer paper in a roll like this, and I do recommend getting one of these holders for your freezer paper. You just pull it out and then you can tear it really easily. So that works great. But we actually didn't use this when we were doing a lot of production. We were lining nine molds every single day. And so for us, having our paper ready to go was really key. So what we did is we actually bought it in sheets. And since our slab is 18 inches wide, it actually worked out perfectly because you can get sheets. Well, first of all, 
This freezer paper is 18 inches wide, which saves us one whole cut, which saves a ton of time. But the sheets that we got were also 18 inches and they were 18 by 24. We got these sheets at Websterant and they come in, you know, a really big pack. So it's kind of a commitment to buy them, but they are exactly 18 by 24, which fits perfectly in the slab. And I'll show you in just a second. Well, I guess I showed you at the beginning, but the other thing that this size is useful for is for your curing racks. So if you have the same kind of curing rack that we have with these trays, check it out. This sheet fits perfectly right in here. So these trays must be about 18 by 24 or a little bit less because we have these sort of edges on the side here. But one of the purposes for our sheets, in addition to lining our molds, was also for our curing racks. And the reason that we put freezer paper on our curing racks, by the way, is because your lye in your soap can react with the metal on this tray. These trays are made out of aluminum and so that's why we make sure that we put something underneath. The other reason is that if you're putting soap over and over again on the same tray, the scent from one type of soap will transfer over to the other one if you keep using the same tray over and over again. So using these freezer paper sheets is a great way to ensure that your scents stay separate, especially if you're making unscented bars or if you're you know, combining fragrance oils and, fra and essential oil soaps. One thing you can do is write the name of your soap on the end here. Like today we're making sea salt and kelp, so I could write sea salt and kelp on here and then reuse the same sheet the next time I'm curing a sea salt and kelp soap. So that's just a tip if you want to reuse your freezer paper sheets. So here's how we line our mold with, you know, we'll go through using this roll, but if you get the sheets, then you already basically have one side done because that sheet, as I showed you a second ago, fits perfectly in here. It goes right to the bottom. It'll get to the corners and it'll wrap around. So this is a perfect size if you want to get the sheets. Now, if you don't have the sheets, then you're going to have to cut it off this roll. I'm not sure how the cost works out. The sheets may be more expensive than the roll, but one other nice thing about the sheets is that you can actually bring them into your local print shop and they might be able to cut these little end pieces for you. We actually had our print shop cut end pieces for us and they weren't perfect. So that part was a little bit frustrating because I guess it is really difficult to cut something that's so flimsy to, to a precise amount. But if you have sheets, they may be able to cut these for you. And getting things cut at a print shop is way, way cheaper than having to do it yourself. So we had a ton of these from our print shop already cut and we had these already from our, you know, for, that we bought on Webstaurant when we just bought the sheets. I will say though that the sheets kind of vary a little bit by width every time you buy them. So sometimes they fit perfectly in the slab and sometimes you do have to slice off just a thin strip along the edge, which is frustrating. But anyway, so I'm gonna cut a piece that's 18 by 24. So if your freezer paper is not the right width, you still want to set up the length first. And what you can do is simply kind of check it like this. Since this one doesn't have to be super accurate, I'm just gonna line it up. That's 24 and I'm just gonna tear it off. Now, another thing you can do is you can, if you're making a whole bunch of these, which I do recommend that you make quite a few at once so that you have them all ready to go, is you can take a template piece like the one I have here or figure out where 24 reaches on your cutting mat. Let's take a look and see if that's 24. Oops, wrong way. Mm 
Okay. This is 24. Some people put a string on their cutter here so you can just pull this out until it's the length of the string and then tear it off. Or what you can do is I have these little blue tape marks here on my cutting mat so you can get it to the right spot. And then you've got another piece and I can just keep going. Here's my spot. So as you probably know, if you're doing something like cutting freezer paper, it's nice to do a lot of it all at once so that you can have some ready to go. Next time you need to line a slab mold, you'll have all your pieces made. Now, for this end piece, I always have a template. I don't have the template with me now because I wanted to show you how to do it from scratch. But once you've made one of these pieces, you can just write the word template on it like I'm gonna do now. You can even include the size if you want, because that might be useful information. So this one is 14 by six. Okay, and these are our end pieces for our slab. Now, guess what? six goes perfectly into 18. So this is another nice piece for us. So since six goes into 18 three times, we can actually use the same width to make three of these. All we have to do is pull off a 14 piece length, or sorry, your 14 inch length. Once you have your 14 inch length, you can divide this into three and create three of these. So now, We've pulled off our 24 inch length. Now we're gonna do a few 14 inch lengths. Again, I'm gonna use my ruler to check how long this is. And this one has to be a little bit more precise because it is going on the inside in that 14 inch section. So I'm actually gonna make it a tiny bit smaller than 14 inches so that'll fit in there properly. All right. Okay, so that's a little bit less than 14 inches. Again, I'm gonna put something, like a little piece of tape or something right here so that I can just keep pulling to the spot for all of my pieces, okay? There's one. By the way, there is an art to tearing this paper. <laughs> Sometimes you end up tearing, tearing off chunks when you don't intend to. All right, I'm gonna do one more. All right, those are approximately 14, but we're gonna double check with our slab mold. All right, so this piece is gonna sit this way. All right, I feel like that piece is a little bit wide. You can see it doesn't sit in there very well. So we're gonna adjust this. I'll check my other pieces, because this was an imperfect science to cut these. It's just an approximate. That one's also a little too wide. Yeah, they're all just a little bit too wide. So we're gonna cut off a little section of that. So remember that these pieces were too wide in this direction. So I'm gonna line all of these up. And then I'm gonna turn this diagonally so I have a little bit more space with my cutting. And they were all just a tad too wide. So I'm just gonna cut off just a sliver from all of them. I'm gonna get my utility knife. All right. 
And I'm just going to cut them all at once. And I'm just sort of eyeballing it because I know they're all just a tiny bit too wide. Got to press down pretty hard with this knife. Make sure your ruler doesn't shift. Now we're going to test these pieces again. Okay. Here's our mold again. All right, they're still a little bit too wide. So I'm gonna cut off a little more. Okay, now they fit beautifully in here, which is great. Now you might be wondering why we don't go all the way across with our sheets. It just saves a lot of freezer paper if you don't do that because you already have a sheet going this way. So this way for making our little pieces, it takes a little bit more time, but you'll get more use out of your freezer paper. All right. This next dimension doesn't have to be as accurate. By the way, when you buy your 18 by 24 inch sheets, like I was talking about, these sheets, if you buy them already cut, you will need to do potentially the exact same thing by slicing off an edge. If they happen to be a little bit bigger than 18 inches or what you need, you might need to do that exact same thing that I just did to these smaller pieces. All right. So I've got four sheets here, which is pretty easy for me to cut through with my utility knife. So I'm gonna create all of my pieces here at the same time. So again, we want these to be six inches. So I'm gonna line this up on my cutting mat, which has these measurements on it already. So I'm starting at zero. Okay, and it goes right to 18. Now I'm a little bit less than 18. So what I'm gonna do is just shift it over a tiny bit so that when I cut, I end up all my pieces being kind of the same width. All right, so we're gonna start with the first cut. So first one's at six inches right here. Now you wanna make sure that you're going across straight and not cutting in a crooked line. So there we go, that's six inches. All right, there's our first cut. So we already have these done. Next, I'm gonna do six more. So we gotta cut at 12. This cutting mat is nice because it has these bolder lines, you know, at every inch. So it's a little bit easier to see. Okay, so now I have a whole bunch of these all ready to go, which is super nice. All right. So I've got the sheet for the one end, and then I have our, our end pieces. We're gonna need two of these per slab. And now what I'm going to do is take my template and fold it, and that way I'll have a fold line as part of my template as well. So back to our slab. I'm going in with my template. And basically what I want is for this to be sort of overlapping here, but I don't want to have to fold it again onto this other edge because that just creates some extra folding. And so what I'm going to do is just take my fingernail and sort of make a line here. Okay. Take that out. And now I'm gonna fold this. Evenly. So this is our template with our fold already in it. So now when I grab a new piece, then all I have to do is line this up with my template and fold in the same spot. Now the way I typically do this is I just put them next to each other like this. And then I fold kind of starting in the middle, just like you would, you know, with an airplane, a paper airplane. And then I do all my pieces that I need for my lining for the day. So if I was lining nine slabs like we did, I would make 18 of these because you need two per slab. But today, 
I'm only lining one slab, which is awesome. So I only need two of these pieces. So I'm going to grab two of these pieces. And now I have a whole bunch of these in stock for next time I line a mold, which is super nice. And I have a bunch of these in stock either for lining the trays, the curing rack trays, or the curing trays, and also for the slabs. So then I'll grab one of these and grab two of these and I'm ready to line. Okay, so we have our pieces, we have our two end pieces and we have our main piece. So I'm gonna grab the mold. All right, we're gonna put our two end pieces in first and they're already folded perfectly for this mold. And basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna stick it in here and then we're gonna fold over the top here. So what I'm doing is I'm pinching right here and sending my fingernail kind of along one end and the other end. So I'm starting in the center and then doing that. And then I'm lifting this up slightly and making that crease a little bit tighter. And now we're gonna take our piece of tape and we're gonna fold this a little bit and the reason we're doing this is to create a little bit of a handle so that when it comes time to pull this off, it's a little bit easier. So let me show you what I mean. <clears throat> Over here, you'll see there's a little bit of a lip that you can pick up to take this off. If you don't do that, it's still okay, but it just takes a little bit longer to get these pieces off because sometimes it's hard to find this little edge right there. You can also use painter's tape, which we mentioned before, which is a little bit easier to remove. Or some people actually use clamps. I've seen people do this and it's a great idea as long as your batter doesn't go too high, you know. Just clamp it on and then you can reuse those. Anyway, we typically use tape. We normally use painter's tape, but I'm a little bit low. This is actually my watercolor tape, which I'm not going to use up just for this. So that's one side done. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Okay, put your piece in. Again, pinch in the center, go to the sides. All right, there's the other piece. Fold your tape. And Get that tape down. <clears throat> All right, we have our two end pieces done. Now we just need to put this bigger piece inside. This part is a little bit trickier and this is where your little tool comes in. I'll show you how to do it with this tool and you can also do it without. So if you don't happen to have something like that. All right, so I'm putting my piece in and we're just kind of eyeballing it to line it up just the same amount on either side. And you're gonna start with the end that's furthest away from you. So I'm gonna use my triangular shaped ruler. This will help us define a, an edge. So what I do is I hold my freezer paper and remember you wanna make sure that your paper is facing the right way. So this is my non-shiny side on the bottom and then the shiny side is facing up where the soap is going to be because you want to be able to remove that really easily from your slab. All right, so I'm holding my freezer paper kind of in place with my fingers. I'm putting the ruler down and pushing to the edge and then I'm just sliding the ruler from side to side to define that edge. All right, <clears throat> Now I have that edge and what I'm doing is following the exact same line that I just created with the ruler. And you could call this good, use your fingernail to get in here if you want. I like to use this tool, which is a little bit of a sort of a flat end here, just to kind of go in and really make that edge crisp. You wanna be careful what kind of tool you use here because you can accidentally tear the freezer paper, which I have done before with this 
sort of sharper edge. So use kind of a blunt edge for this. All right, so that piece is sitting down now. I'm gonna turn the slab around. Now we're gonna do the exact same thing that we did with the sides, but we're gonna do it with this, this side over here. All right. So starting in the middle, I pinch, send my fingernails over and the other side. Now I'm probably making this look pretty easy. It's actually a little bit tricky to do at first. So it's gonna take a little while maybe for you to get used to doing this, but eventually it'll become really easy. All right, now unlike these edge pieces, I have this extra piece that's hanging over that I need to get over onto the other side. And I like to do this tidily. If you had a clamp, you could just clamp this here and it would probably be good. But I like to make this edge nice and crisp. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing that we just did, except on this outside edge. And again, get that edge really nice. And then use my piece of tape fold over a little, little end and put that in place. All right, <clears throat> now the next edge is basically the trickiest one that you're gonna do. And the reason is that you don't wanna send this over, you know, this way, cause you've already created this really nice crisp edge right here. So you wanna keep that in place. So what I normally do is kind of make sure that's in place, hold it with my finger, and then I gently move my ruler sort of to the center just to smooth it out. Okay, once I'm there, I press down with my ruler to hold it in position, get my hand there really nice and firm, and then push to this other end. And actually my hand's a little bit too far away. So scoot it over. Do this other end the same way you did the first one. Make that crease. Then again, fold it down. Use your fingernail or this tool to really make that a sharp edge. Okay. And then you're gonna do the same thing on the other side. We are nearly done here. So you can see that when you have your pieces already cut, it actually goes pretty quick. All right. There we go. And you do wanna make sure that this is nice and flat in here. So get that other edge. Okay. Fold my piece of tape. And now my whole slab is lined. So it looks really good. I do have some space here on some of the corners where I can see the wood. But as I mentioned before, it's really easy to clean those out. Basically, once you put your batter in and then you let it sit, when you go to pull it out, it does not get stuck on these little tiny sections and the wood ends up just fine. All you have to do is once you take your slab out, just take your little tool or some other kind of tool where you can get into that corner and just pull off the excess soap that's gonna be sitting there. And then next time your mold is all ready to go again. And when you looked at our mold earlier, it looks pretty clean. So it's not like it damages the wood at all. So anyway, now we have this slab all done. It's ready to pour into, but we're missing one thing. We need to make notches on these edges to define where our loaves are gonna be. So remember that this slab is actually four loaves of soap. And so we wanna be able to define where those loaves are in order to create texture on top of our bars. Now, if you're just pouring one color soap or even a couple of colors of soap, and then your top is completely flat, then you probably don't need these lines. So it kind of depends on the type of soap that you make. But we create texture on top of our soap and it's a very specific texture. So we do want notches for our particular slab here. 
So what I do <clears throat> is I line up my ruler. Now, what's important here is that you line up your ruler with the wood. Don't line it up with the freezer paper because if you line it up with the freezer paper and your freezer paper is slightly in, you're gonna end up with your notches not in the right place. So normally what I do is I line it up with the wood. I can see the edges of the mold there. And here's the other edge, and this is my 14. So first I measure out the entire thing, 14. Then I take my Sharpie and I go right in the middle, right at seven. All right, so that's half. And then I do my three and a half over here and three and a half over here. Because each of these loaves are three and a half inches. Now I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. By the way, this is the mold that we're modeling against. So if I measure the inside dimension here, this is three and a half. So picture, you know, four of these going this way. And that's basically what we're doing here. Again, if you've used a slab mold, you probably know all this, but still good to know if you're new to slab molds or you've never used one before. All right. So again, I'm lining up with the wood mold, going the halfway point, doing my 10 and a half over here and my three and a half over here. All right. Now we really are done with our mold. It is completely ready to go. When I pour in here, I've got my notches so I know exactly where my loaves are gonna be. And we're all set. Good luck. Let us know if you have any questions at all on how to line a mold. Remember that this is just one way of doing it. This is how we've always done it. I find it really quick and easy and hope you do too. All right, thanks so much, you guys. Bye.